Hey guys, it's Dorn with Tactical Hive. In today's video, we're going to be camming up this rifle. Though we're not going to use anything permanent. Everything we put on this thing, we could easily take off and take it right back to where the way it should be. Nice and black. All right, up next. Hey guys, today's video is brought to us by Vetter Holsters. Uh, Vetter Holsters are made in the USA. They're a great company. We use them in our classes as well as making content. And I also use one pretty much in my EDC. Uh, I got a Glock 19 Gen 5 in this thing, and uh, it's got a great clip on it. I've been using this thing for a while now, and I have no complaints. I can run it at appendix or back at about the four o'clock as I normally do. And uh, definitely check out these guys in the description below. Um, they can pretty much match up with any major make model uh, pistol. If you got a pistol that needs a holster, and better holster is a great place to start. All right, guys, so how to cami up a rifle. If you, for whatever reason, want to remain concealed out in nature, you know, doesn't matter why, but you don't want to commit to permanently altering the, uh, the exterior of your firearm, of your rifle, of your carbine, whatever, whatever you got, you, know, you have options. In the past, using cami netting and then zip tying or attaching it to your firearm by whatever means you can come up with does work but there's a lot of snag hazards with this stuff. Um, you're moving around in terrain, in the bush, so to speak. You know, this is not the deal. This is gonna get caught on things. Um, you're gonna end up just taking a knife or a Leatherman scissors, whatever you have, just keep cutting on it, cutting on it, cutting on it, trying to keep those snags from happening because snags are loud. They make, an un they make a, uh, a very distinct sound and that is there's something over there, something probably the size of a person moving bushes around and that is bad. So. You know, if you're going to go with this, okay, but I don't recommend it, especially with the actual netting. The netting is what's going to get you more so than not. So excluding that, we're going to move on. All right. And uh, the first thing I want to talk about, obviously, is just regular military grade duct tape. The Army Air Force call this 100 mile an hour tape. Supposedly you could tape piston fighter wings and go 100 miles an hour using this. Probably not entirely true, but... You know, it's a great story. In the Navy, we call it rigger's tape. We use it for rigging up things like we're going to do right now. We're going to rig up this rifle. So, you know, this green tape, you just go ahead and pull out a little, pull it out. And then just figure out where you want to put it. You know, get your uh, your buttstock positioning set right where you like it. You know, maybe you're running uh, plates, maybe you're not. You know, maybe that's going to change... Uh, how you set up your, the length of your buttstock, you want to have all that stuff figured out ahead of time before you start altering. And then, just take strips, and if you want to get fancy, you, know, you can cut pieces of them off to make it look a little bit, you know, get rid of those straight lines, not a lot of straight lines in nature. Um, and you just want to break up the weapon system a little bit, break up that outline because the human eye when searching is looking A for movement, it's the first thing it's going to see. And then there are colors and shapes depending on the environment and what you're bringing into it, that is going to depend on whether they see the color or the shape first. So we are going to add more natural color to this rifle because unless you're fighting in a uh, active volcanic area or maybe there was a massive forest fire that came through black's not going to blend in too well you know i don't know maybe we're uh down in a coal mine i, I really i hope not i hope not i don't want to go down there but uh generally speaking you know black doesn't blend in out in nature too well so you know we're just going to go ahead and chop this up so i never used this tape method while i was in the military because we could paint our guns some units don't allow that um i've seen pictures you know back in the 60s and 70s of guys doing this to their m16s to kind of break up that outline a little bit more better if that makes sense and that's the that's where i got it you know i just i love history i love checking that kind of stuff out and uh you know just giving it putting it to the test um there's no vertical 
are really horizontal lines generally in nature, especially when vegetation. Uh, vegetation grows up and then gravity kind of pulls it down, pulls it, you know, every which way. So you want your lines to kind of match up with that. You know, as I, you know, my career progressed, you know, I got to learn a lot on the job in regards to stealth, concealment, camouflage, you know, what later became, you know, my sniper career. Like my career for me started off as a brand new guy and I was just a uh, on the job training, you know, nug that carried heavy things and, you know, took the middle of the night watches, you know, fun stuff. And I actually learned a lot of this stuff from Tosh. And the guys that came up, you know, before 9-11, before my time in like, you know, 80s, 90s or before, field craft, stealth, concealment, you know, being invisible um, was really a big deal. You know, they spent a lot of time on it. And that's kind of fallen by the wayside. Field craft isn't something that I saw, you know, being preached or talked about outside of that sniper wheelhouse realm. Um, I can't speak to other units, but, um, you know, there's definitely a time and a place for it. You could anywhere you have, you know, if you had, did not paint. So, you know, if you were in a time and place where you needed to be a little bit sneakier, hide a little bit more effectively, and you didn't have spray paint or time to let it dry, etc., you could just find tape in whatever color, and you could just go ahead and apply this method to the whole gun, which we're not going to do. But um, this works, you know, it is tape, it is going to wear out, you will have to replace it. But as long as you have a good quality tape, you know, this is from whatever military contractor, you know, the government bought it from, it's made in Cincinnati, ASTM. I don't know what that means, but uh, Gorilla um, makes really good stuff. And there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of good stuff out there. You just gotta do your research. But, um, you know, I'm just using OD green and get it in different colors. Another method that I've used is um, Camoform. It's, that's the name of the company, Camoform. They're made in, uh, Bellingham, Washington, and it's a uh, part of the Magnet Corp, if that helps you. And this is just kind of a, a desert digi pattern. They come in many, many different patterns. You know, I've used woodland, I've used multicam. Uh, I've definitely used these desert digis because that's where I used to go. And you can go ahead and uh, we'll do up the scope. You just go ahead and find a spot. I'm gonna go ahead and go right over the top of my scope cover. I'm just gonna pull this out, attach it on, and cut it. And it, this stuff's pretty cool. It clings to itself. So you just kind of size up where you want to where you want to go with it. The big thing on this is you want to pull it tight because it clings to itself, just like so. All right. And I've got far enough forward, I can still put my cap on. These rubber caps aren't the greatest, but you know, they're better than nothing. And then uh, I can still get to my dial, you know, so I'm backed off at two and a half right now. And I can bump this thing back up to 10, 10 no problem. Now I've got these uh, skinnier sections, so I might get a little bit uh, more creative. I could cut the sections to match the gaps, but I actually want to cover up the sling mount, or excuse me, the scope mount itself. So I'm going to uh, do a diagonal pattern and kind of wrap it around itself. So start from the bottom. I'm going to wrap it over. over. Pull it tight. Make sure the camouflage end is poking up. Wrap it down on itself. Keep it off of my dials. I'll go ahead. Do that again. All right, guys, so part two, you know, this is as far as we can take, we're going to take it. Again, we're not, you know, going on a sniper stock. We're not trying to get into a specific military unit. We're not, a, you know, auditioning for a new job. We're just trying to break this thing up so that it's a little bit easier 
to uh, conceal. We went ahead, we taped up the buttstock region. You could go ahead and use the rigorous tape, the 100 mile an hour tape, whatever you want to call it, across the whole gun. If you wanted to, that'll work. Here on the scope, we went ahead and used the uh, camo wrap. This stuff uh, is pretty awesome, especially on suppressors. You, you see guys putting this on the cans quite a bit. Um, that, because it just, it acts as an insulator and it'll save your hand, it'll save your, your pants. If you've ever like gone through a couple of mags, put put your freaking gun down and burned a hole in your pants or your knee pad, uh, not the deal. So I highly suggest having this stuff in your kit and just using it as needed. Um, I'm a big fan of it. So went ahead and just broke up the outline of the scope. Yeah, there's still some black there. You know, I'm not gonna mess with my dials. I'm not gonna mess with my, uh, my red dot or any of that. I'm still gonna be able to put my protective caps on. These are just kind of the old rubber ones. Uh, they, they, they make better uh, purpose-built like spring-loaded plastic ones as well. You can just pop them up, back, on and off as you see fit. And, um, you know, I went ahead and I covered up the, the mount on the back. But, and then on the front, I didn't, uh, I didn't bother. You know, I'm not that worried about it. I just want to break this up, but you can be as deliberate and get into the weeds, so to speak, as much as you see fit. All right, moving forward, <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and just apply rubber bands and then veg, you know, obviously without painting the gun, we could have just changed out the furniture. You know, I've got tan and green, pistol grips, butt stocks, rail coverage. You could change out the whole fore end for a camel, you know, you can go as far down the rabbit hole as you want. You can spend as much money as you want, but I don't want to do any of that. I just want to take this gun exactly the way it is and just break it up a little bit, help myself out. So on the fore end, you know, going back to the cami netting like we talked about, there's no working parts. You know, you never want that cami netting to be anywhere near, you know, your optics or the, the functioning part of the weapon, the charging handle, the magazine well, the ejection port, you know, that's bad. All of that, you know, as you can see, is completely free and clear of any camouflage additions that I'm doing. I need this thing above all to function reliably and, you know, give me that best possible chance to uh, accomplish what I need to and stay safe while doing it. So again, this is just kind of cosmetic. We're breaking it up. Now I could easily put the tape along the mag well, you know, below it's not gonna mess with it. No big deal. But as far as the fore end goes, I'm not gonna be putting any rubber bands or applying any vegetation to the rear. You know, that's where my body comes in contact with the, the weapon system itself, as well as all the functioning that happens that I don't want to impede that. So beat that horse to death um i don't know if you noticed but i've got this like super old 1960s m16 stand that i'm using for demo purposes i had it on the barrel but it was slipping around so i just clipped it right here onto the rail and uh it works great so you know if you can find one of these on ebay or anything like that they're a cool piece of history you know they were just designed for the m16 as it rolled out you know better part of almost 60 years ago <laughs> Anywho, so we're going to add rubber bands, all right? In order to do that, I'm going to bring them right over the top here. You know, rubber bands vary in size, strength, etc. So you just got to make it work. I'm going to go ahead and just add this just like so on the forend. I'm going to go, go ahead. Um, you could put them directly on the barrel. You know, this isn't a super precise um, weapon system, but it is, you know, used to maximize the 5.56 potential. And if you go ahead and start touching the barrel, you're impeding that harmonic whip, which causes the, uh, the rounds to be less consistent or accurate. So, you know, we're not going to do anything with the barrel. It's a nice, you know, kind of flat gray, which is better than black. We're going to leave it as is. Obviously, if we had a can on here, we would definitely cami that up by all means necessary. Those things get hot. So again, start with the thermo wrap and then using that as a barrier to your rubber bands and then your veg is definitely the way to go. But we're gonna forego that today. All right, guys. So on our fore end, we've got uh, four sets of, you know, four rubber bands. And then it all depends on your environment. You know, environment can change. So you gotta keep track of what's around you. You want the veg to match up with um you know how it all looks and you can run rubber bands around the scope as well 
Um, and I, I would do that. I'd have it on the suppressor, I'd have it on the forend, then I'd have it on the scope. <clears throat> you just gotta mess around with it, you know, because you want to defeat shapes. It's all about shapes. The eye's looking for shapes. So, you know, the circular nature of your scope, the circular nature of your muzzle or suppressor, you know, that circle, that's gonna stand out. Not a lot of perfect circles out there in nature. So we're going to use the foliage to break up the muzzle as best we can. Now, when firing, you know, with a flash hider, it's gonna, you know, blow stuff all over the place, which is why having cans and linear comps and things is a good idea, but you get the idea. And that's all we're going for right now. But just securing the veg, you know, along the sides, maybe a little bit on the top, but you gotta be worried about your sight path, you know, for your optics, you know, your scope, as well as your red dot. Um, I do have irons on here, but uh, I don't use them, you know, I don't care. I'm just gonna leave them on there to leave them on there in case I wanna use this for something else. Um, put a different optic on there, but I just need, don't want my veg to interrupt, you know, my ability to actually aim this thing, which is, you know, important. So, you know, I'm just putting veg on here. This, this is a, these are branches that kind of look like grass. This actually is grass. So we'll go ahead and we'll pull this up. Stick this through on itself. And we'll just kind of break this up just like so. Then we can stick uh, different types of branches, you know, over on this side. Just to give you an idea of how this all works. Oh, there goes my kickstand. Just like so. And now, when I'm walking around, this thing is, the silhouette, the outline of this thing is broken up. Just like so. And that's kind of what the idea of what we're going for. All right. So we can go ahead and we can stick a little bit of this on the magwell. Just kind of break up that lower receiver as well. Not too worried about it, but you know, we're just having fun. Just like so. This is not impeding the magwell itself, you know, getting in and out of it. The release button or, you know, the safety, the trigger, anything like that. Free and clear of any of the mechanical function of the firearm itself. And we're just trying to break up that silhouette just a little bit here, a little bit there, just whatever we can get away with. All right. So as you can see, you know, this thing is a lot harder to see than it was. I use three different methods and all of it is very temporary. I can pull all this stuff off when I'm done, clean the, the rifle, put it away, and I'd be right back to where I started. Again, it's gonna be situation dependent, obviously environmentally dependent, but you know, just being able to break this up in the event I wanna be a little bit less noticeable. These are just three methods you can use, you know, without breaking out the rattle cans or doing anything drastic. So hope this helped guys, you know, just, a, just a, something for the toolbox, something for later if you need it. And, um, you know, these are things that I've seen used, I've gotten to use a little bit here and there. I did use the tape method actually once during a sniper trip, but it was for a, uh, it was for just like a loner gun. It wasn't a sniper rifle, it was just the one I was walking around with. So I actually have used this method, come to think of it. Anyway, it's Door with Tactical Hive, you know, if you haven't uh, already done so, please like and subscribe, hit that bell. You know, we got a lot of content coming out on this channel as we as well as a back catalog um, that has surpassed 900 videos just on YouTube. So anyway, guys, thanks for being here. I'll see you next time. This is Door out.